Welcome. This is the podcast Thriving One, episode three. As always, start. Don't confuse anything you hear from me for the truth. It's just some stuff I believe. Today's topic, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you can guess. Okay? And I went to a lot of trouble making these pretty signs. And it took a while because they won't let me have the sharp scissors and the glue that smells good. So I have to do this really hard. And Play-Doh scissors are difficult to work with. Now, in episodes one and two, we discussed integrity and beliefs. Integrity, which I think is a prerequisite for thriving life, is when your thoughts, your words, your feelings, your actions, and your beliefs are in agreement. In episode two, we talked about beliefs and how important they were to thoughts and words and feelings and actions. Now, I'm going to talk about all four of these things together because I'm not smart enough to talk about them separately because they're so intertwined, or to use my word, tangled up. I'm going to start with words, but we'll dip in and out of the other topics as we go along. Words often spark actions. Uh, they can be, if they're harsh words, they can spark harsh actions. Kind words, you know, you might get like a thank you or some damn thing. Uh, feelings can initiate behavior. Uh, if I'm feeling put upon or embarrassed, I might withdraw us from a certain situations. And actions can result in feelings. And, and I'm telling you those things because I feel like I need to say them even though I already know you know this because you've been doing thoughts and words and feelings and actions at least since you were two. Uh, now, back to words, I have prejudices about words. My favorite letter is S. My favorite word is sometimes. Sometimes begins with S and it ends with S. And if you'll notice all these nice words back here, end with S. A lot of times people make the mistake of not using S. I got a buddy who, who complains sometimes. I just don't know what my purpose is. Like he's only got one. We can decide many, many, many purposes, even just during a day. And that S is really important sometimes. I also am very su suspicious of absolutes. Absolutes are like when you use words like always, or never, or everybody, or just, or only, or all the time, or nobody. Okay? These things are not always accurate. And by the way, my observation that they're not always accurate that's a thought. I told you this stuff was tangled up. And when I said I was suspicious, that's a feeling. Tangled up. Uh, other prejudice I have is I hear things like, actions speak louder than words. Okay? And that's almost an absolute. It's enough to make me suspicious. Okay? So I did an experiment, which I'm going to try to recreate for you here about whether actions are always louder than words. Watch the experiment. Goodbye! Which one was louder? The word! So sometimes words are extremely helpful. I'm in my shop here. There are literally thousands of objects in this room. And there are words for every object in here. And I know most of the words for most of the objects in the room. Not all. But as helpful as words are and as necessary they are, they're, they're confusing at times. Confusion, confusion is a feeling. These are tangled up. The, 
they get confused because well, we got we got words for things that exist, but we even have words for stuff that doesn't exist. Show me a real live dragon or a real live unicorn. There's no such thing, but we name things that don't exist. Then some other stuff that confuses me is we give names to stuff that we really don't understand so we can pretend we understand. One of these things is the color red. I have been asking people for decades to describe the color red in words and no one has been able to do that because it can't be done. You know, don't get a point and say it's a stop sign. No. No, it's a fire truck. No, you don't get a point. You have to use words. And it can't be done. One guy had this big sophisticated thing. He, he told me I would have had to take a physics class and understand about uh, uh, wavelengths of light and the infrared spectrum and all this crap. And I said, well, that's a nice try, but probably it's time for me to tell you I'm colorblind. I'm never going to understand red. The other one where, where people, where you say things so they got a word so we think we understand them is the word energy. Picture this. It's 1967. No, 68. 1968 in the fall. Lovely fall evening. I'm sitting in a class at our local university in general cellular biology. And it's a really nice professor, Dr. Johnson. And he was explaining the human digestive process to us. And he got to the part where he said, you know, this, this happens and this happens, and then you get glucose, I think it was glucose, and it goes in the cell, and then in the cell it gets converted to energy. Dr. Johnson, Dr. yes, young man. <laughs> I said, what's energy? And I don't really remember he said, but it's something smart sounding like energy is that which has the potential to move matter through space. <laughs> I said, that's what energy does. What is energy? And he sat down at the desk, he had been standing, and he put on his glasses, and he looked real thoughtful. And he had them Clark Kent, big black plastic glasses. I don't have those. And he chewed on the end a little bit. He sat him down, he folded his hands and looked at me just really seriously and said, young man, do you think that a, a, a professor who could tell you what energy is would be teaching night classes in Topeka, Kansas? <laughs> and that had an effect on my feelings and my behavior. I felt humbled, which is a really unusual feeling for me, and it affected my behavior by I never asked him another question the rest of the semester. Now, feelings overlap with words. We got words for feelings, but they're real vague and real variable. Okay, somebody tells you they're depressed. When one person might say depressed, and it means they burned their grilled cheese sandwich and another person might be depressed because they took their dog to the vet to have it neutered and the dog was moping around and not being active. And while we're on neutering dogs, I want somebody to tell me why it is you take your dog to get neutered. The vet charges you several hundred dollars to break something inside the dog so that it doesn't work anymore and sends you a bill for having it fixed. Doesn't make any sense to me. But again, I get confused easily. Now in terms of these words, thoughts, words, feelings, actions, humans have a really varied level of control or effect on each of these things. Now, we've got a pretty large amount of control over words and behavior. I remember once, really late at night, there was a man at my house and he was uh, committing the sin of trying to help me. And he was talking about, well, we're not responsible for all of our own behavior. And I did, yes we are. 
I'm in charge of my behavior. I'm in control of my behavior. He said, you really think so? I said, yes, damn it. I'm, that's irresponsible to not be in control of your behavior. And, he, and I was drinking a Pepsi at the time. He says, I want you to drink two Pepsis before you go to bed. And don't piss for four hours after you wake up. Call me and tell me about this controlled stuff again. And that affected my feelings, but I did ask him some more questions. Um, and sometimes with thoughts, we're real focused, okay? You, if we're doing some math problems, or we're there laying out a staircase, uh, or we're putting a cake together and put it in the oven, you know, we can follow the steps and we're real focused and pretty much in charge of what we're thinking. But other times, thoughts just jump in my head. And I know what happens to you other people, but you don't talk about it, okay? I can remember just a month or so ago, I'm minding my own business here in the shop, having a coffee, having a smoke that I can't let you see me smoke, okay, having a smoke, drinking some coffee, and it jumps in my head from nowhere. I started thinking about DC comic heroes and their names. Now I started reading DC comics in 1955 and I haven't read one probably since 1965. But it occurred to me out of nowhere they got four main superheroes. Oh I hope I can remember them all. Superman, Batman, Flash, and some other guy. Oh Green Lantern. Okay. And if you look at the names of their secret identities, all their secret identities are composed of two first names. Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, Hal Jordan, Barry Allen. Now, I don't know where that thought came from. Maybe it was some other old guy who was trying to think of it, couldn't remember it, and a thought got loose and bumped into my head. I don't know. But I'm not always in complete control of my thoughts. So we talked a little about thoughts and words and actions and feelings. And, you know, I can have the thought, I, I order a cup of coffee, it's just regular old coffee, and they call my name, I go up there, and there's a large mug of some kind of orange foam with what looks like bird droppings on top. And I have the thought, this is not my coffee which affects words, uh, this is not mine, and which, which affects behavior, they bring me my stuff. So that's all together. Now see, there, there's an underlying belief behind my thoughts, words, and action there. I believe I deserve to get what I paid for. I believe I should do it without fussing. And, and so that resulted in my behavior. So that was actually practicing integrity. So when I spill the coffee, and I go and I ask him, can you give me a towel? I've spilled the coffee again, and I clean it up. Okay, those thoughts and words and feelings are also results of my belief. If you make a mess, clean it up. If you make a mess, don't run or hide or lie about it unless you can get away with it. And, and so a lot of this stuff sounds really uppity and, and, and complex with integrity, but we do it every day. And it's not about, all about gigantic things. It's about little stuff because we got tens of thousands of beliefs. And when we act in accord with our beliefs, then we're practicing integrity. When, when I... I notice I'm having some kind of extended mental or emotional distress. Almost always it's because I'm either not doing some stuff I ought to be doing or I'm doing stuff I believe I shouldn't. So a lot of that is self-induced. Today's aphorism. Today's aphorism. Hope is optimi optimism in such abundance that it cannot be contained in the present and it spills into our future. Next episode, episode four, 
we're going to discuss actual thriving tendencies, behaviors and, and words and thoughts that the people who are thriving tend to have. I will close by telling you once again that any reproduction, reproadcast, or retransmission of the contents of this podcast without written authorization by me are considered flattering. Thanks for sitting in. There is only one us.